Forza Horizon's Creepy Crowd, The Kraken, Splinter Seals, and The Lost Media of Mario Knights. All of this and more on Missing Number. The Forza Horizon series is downright creepy. People in the games will just stop and stare at you, no matter where you go. They won't take their eyes off of you. Even the people that can be seen moving around, and mingling, aren't what they seem. The second you turn your back to them, they'll just stop and stare at you as they watch your every move. Even the radio DJs are creepy. Can I interest you in joining our cult classics event in Byron Bay? We're not weird or anything. We just believe in racing cool cars. So come on, join us. Join us. What's more, bizarre ghostly apparitions have been spotted as well. There are even sightings of ghost cars. There are even ghost trains. Scariest of all is that there are vehicles that would try to ambush you as they wait for unsuspecting players to get close to them. If that wasn't enough, you also have to watch out for giant speed bumps and deep potholes. During the night, things get no less spooky. Some players have spotted abandoned vehicles parked in the middle of nowhere. And there was one time, someone saw a bus slowly driving on a dirt road near the woods at night. Is it lost? Or perhaps it's searching for its next victim? And finally, if you go to the Abbey Monastery ruins in Forza Horizon 2, you can hear loud shrieks and what sounds like rocks falling down, even though nothing can be seen moving. Can you hear that? For more creepy sights and sounds, click here. Tales of haunted highways have circulated around the world for decades, and in Tokyo Extreme Racer 3, something paranormal can be found while driving around the streets of Japan. If you go to the Kasumi Geseki Tunnel on the C1 Outer Loop after 2 a.m., a mysterious black car will suddenly appear behind you, challenging you to a race. This car appears randomly and is ominously called the Death Driver. According to the game's fandom page, the in-game info about the Death Driver states that during a battle, he crashed. Since then, there is no evidence that anyone has seen him. 
There is a story that he suddenly appeared in the middle of the night in the Kasumi Geseki Tunnel and challenged a battle. Furthermore, his driving is like a bullet, traveling with no fear of death, but since the accident, he has installed the highest level roll bar in the interior and added urethane, all for the sake of strengthening the car. The death driver has a creepy supernatural vibe, but there's something even creepier that can be found on the road. If you manage to beat the death driver, you can actually purchase and drive his car. Normally, when driving any other car, yellow vans emblazoned with text and logos can be seen on the road. But if you take the death driver car out for a spin, the yellow vans will be replaced with nondescript white vans, and inside the vehicles are ghosts. They can be seen staring out the back and side windows. When you think of a Mario horror game, the first game that comes to mind may be Luigi's Mansion. But there's another alleged game in the Mario franchise that's lesser known. It's called Mario Knights. This lost media is said to have been the last Mario game for the SNES, even though the Super Mario Wiki page lists P-Cross NP as the final Mario title. Little is known about Mario Knights, which supposedly had a small release and the only evidence of the game's existence was originally this picture of the game's cartridge box. However, some people believe that it's either fake or photoshopped, and that the game itself is either a bootleg, a ROM hack, or a hoax. The only information about Mario Knights seems to be from this forum post found on a horror website called Slime Beast. The post is about why Mario is actually an evil villain in certain games like Super Mario Bros., Donkey Kong, Yoshi Island, and curiously, Mario Knights. According to the original poster, who says they played the game for hours, Mario Knights is a canonical game where Mario wields a flashlight as he travels through a pitch black dystopic Night Kingdom in search of Princess Peach. There's poor visibility outside of the flashlight's beam, but shining the beam of light at enemies will make them burn. Some of the game's enemies include wide-eyed spiders, a gibbering boogeyman, and mask-wearing worms, which can pop up from the ground and make Mario scream. A grayscale Yoshi is also in the game, and it has the ability to spit out blobs of acid at enemies. Bowser is nowhere to be seen however, and instead, a villain named Emperor Yiyag, who's pictured on the box cover, has kidnapped Peach himself. Failure to defeat the Emperor in time will make the Emperor take a bite out of Princess Peach's skullcap. And inside the Emperor's final castle, the word Atone can be seen hidden on a wall. Here's footage of the game in action, uploaded by a YouTube user named Why Are You Scared? If this seems too dark and gruesome for a Mario game, then that's because it is. Mario Knights is almost certainly a hoax. It's hard to believe that Nintendo would make something like this, a game where dead bodies hang from trees, and where someone actually eats a chunk of Peach's skull. What's more, the game looks like it was made using a fan-made level editor. And then there's the box art. Upon closer scrutiny, the CGI of Mario's head looks amateurish and doesn't match the overall art style and the Mario Knights font looks too generic for a Mario game. Not only that, but the person who made the Slime Beast post is a man named Christopher Howard Wolf, who makes short horror stories slash creepypastas. Additionally, in a now-deleted Lost Media Archive page, as shown in a YouTube video by Sourcebrew, a user named the Sponge 231 sent a letter to Nintendo in January 2017 inquiring about Mario Knights. 
three months later, Nintendo actually responded, saying that they have no records of Mario Knights, and that it was not developed or published by Nintendo. In Splinter Cell Double Agent, there is a secret mission that's so secretive that no one seemed to know of its existence for four years. Apparently, the only reason the public even knows about it is because Ubisoft themselves shed light on it. In August 2010, four years after Double Agent was released, a gameplay video of the mission was uploaded online by Ubisoft's gaming level designers Julian Duanez and Simon LaSalle. LaSalle reportedly created the mission. To activate the quest, players have to be in the game's two-player co-op mode in the original Xbox version of the game. Then players have to shoot open this locker, which contains a giant gold coin. You then have to insert the coin in a vending machine, which will result in this happening. You've just found and rescued a baby seal named Muffin. There are a total of five seals hidden in the level. Muffin, Pepperoni, Vanilla, Cookie, and Buddy. They're located in obscure places like a safe, vent, and car trunk. Like Muffin, each seal requires special items to rescue. Some of the items include a scroll, glasses, and party hat. One seal tasks you with giving her flowers to steal her heart away, but giving her a fish instead will make you fail the mission. Overall, the entire mission is surprisingly long and complex for an easter egg. At one point, you have to shoot and collect a valve in a shower, then place it on a station wall. You then have to collect a metal detector, and use it on a pile of junk. This will reveal a bomb inside, which is used to blow up a sewer tunnel grate. And inside the sewer tunnel, is a key that you have to use to open the trunk of a car. And inside the trunk, is the final seal. When all the seals have been rescued, a princess seal will descend from the heavens, thanking you. As Kotaku reported at the time, one of the game's developers was disappointed that no one had discovered this easter egg. After searching online, it does appear that information about the easter egg, which is scarce, only popped up online after this video was uploaded. Not only that, but this video seems to be the only video on YouTube that shows the easter egg. When I was younger, I was terrified of going into the water. I cried hysterically one day after going into a lake at summer camp. The lake was cold and murky, and not being able to see what was in the lake scared me since I thought there was a lake monster that would pull me down into the abyss. In Assassin's Creed 2, my fears were realized. A giant squid with a glowing yellow eye can be seen rising to the surface before slowly descending back down. This monster dwells in the assassin tomb beneath the Visitachoni church in Venice. In order for the creature to pop up, you have to pull on a specific lever and then look down into the water for about one minute. And if you pull the lever again and look back down into the water, this will happen. The origin of this monster is a mystery, but perhaps this is the legendary kraken guarding the tomb. Its unnatural glowing eye could be the result of a piece of Eden, which has the power to manipulate the thoughts of individuals to one's own will. In Super Mario 64 DS, you have to rescue Mario, Luigi, and Wario. They're locked behind doors and require special keys to open. If you don't have any of the keys, however, these chilling messages will pop up if you try to open the doors. 